Alright, so in this video, we're going to use the 741 op amp to make a non-inverting comparator. And I know it's hard to read the letters, probably can't even read the letters from there. But using this jeweler's loop, you can see here the 741. So there's also some letters on both sides of them that's uh, not important in this video. Any 741 op amp should work just fine with this circuit. So now let's start looking at just a basic kind of uh, schematic diagram that, that tells you how this circuit works. So we're going to take the 741 op amp and we're going to give a voltage to pin 2 and to pin 3. So pin 2 is the inverting input and then pin 3 is the non-inverting input. So pin 3 is going to be the one that we're changing the voltage to and that's generally how I see people draw them out. The one that's going to be changed is put on top. So even though within the component the inverting input is at the top here, I'm going to put it at the bottom of the schematic because that's going to be our stable pin. We're going to ground it and leave it grounded. The, the non-inverting pin we're going to be changing the voltage. So we'll either give it a positive voltage or a negative voltage. And what we'll get if we give it a positive voltage we'll get an output of a positive voltage. That's a pin six. If we give it a negative voltage, a voltage below zero volts, we'll get a negative voltage at the output in relationship to ground. And uh, one thing to remember is these two pins, they just measure the voltage. There's really no current at all that is flowing. It's just the voltage but there is current of course flowing out of the output you can actually power stuff so now we come to the schematic this is the circuit we're going to build but right now let's focus on the 741 op amp so we're going to have to power this 741 op amp so you can see here pin number seven the second pin down that goes directly to the positive rail pin number four here goes to the negative rail there it's actually going to have a negative voltage and so we can look at the pin layouts here you can see the positive voltage side goes to pin 7 the negative voltage side goes to pin 4 now that's negative in relationship to ground we're going to have almost 9 volts above ground and then almost 9 volts below ground for a total of almost 18 volts in that range so now the uh, the non or the inverting pin I should say that one is uh, pin number two so we're gonna ground pin number two and I'm actually gonna do that with a uh, 470 ohm resistor because this jumper right here is gonna be ground we're gonna go to pin number two the second pin up because we're really close to uh, these other pins here we got the power pin there so I'm just going to use a resistor from ground just to limit current if we make a short circuit or something ultimately the voltage is going to go through the resistor to this pin no current's going to flow so the pins going to know what the voltage is whether we use a resistor or a jumper and now for uh, the other side of the circuit this is the voltage we're going to control. So as I've said before, we want the uh, output to be in the same. If we have a positive input, we want the output positive. If the input is uh, negative, we want the output to be negative. So we're going to control it with the non-inverting input. It's not inverting. The output signal will be the same polarity as the input signal so that's pin number three there so third pin down I already have a, a one kilo ohm trim pot and then there's two 470 ohm resistors that's the only uh, fixed value resistor I'm going to use you can see here on one side of the trim pot that goes to negative the lower side there the uh, upper side here I have a 470 ohm resistor that goes to the positive rail so there will be, remember, almost 18 volts. 18 volts if uh, you're using two batteries that are 9 volts or above. But uh, you're going to have about 18 volts across these three components. And so to have enough resistance, I used 
a 1 kilo ohm trim pot and uh, 470 ohm resistors on each side and we're just going to take a jumper and jump that. We could also use a resistor again there's going to be no current flow so at the uh, output of the trim pot if we used a resistor there would be no current flow so the voltage will still get there and uh, the two input pins they don't allow current you'll probably get that tiny trickle but for the most part no current flows through the inputs so now we have the two inputs wired up so over here this is just a polarity indicator circuit so we have our output and we can power things with it we're going to power two LEDs the current if it's a, a positive output here in comparison to ground then it's going to flow through the resistor and then through this LED if it's a negative voltage then ground will have a higher voltage and so current will flow through this LED so I want this LED to be green so what we're going to do is right by ground we're going to start at pin 6 the output and then go one row above that with a 470 ohm resistor the resistance doesn't matter it's just the uh, lower the value of the resistor the brighter the LEDs will be and the higher the value of the resistor the more dim the LEDs will be so for this one when it's positive I want it green the color doesn't really matter but that's that's what I want so I want it green so that we know that the output is positive so the long lead of the LED the anode goes towards pin 6 the short lead the cathode we connect directly to ground and so the long lead the anode will put to this resistor which goes to the output of the op amp and then I'm going to use a red LED for this one so this one the anode the longer lead is towards ground there the shorter lead the cathode that heads to our output of our trim pot for when there's a negative voltage it'll go through that LED that LED will light up so when we have red we'll know that the output of the uh, trim pot is more negative than ground so that's it for the circuit we just have to apply the battery to it now so now all we should need to do is to power the uh, breadboard so I have these jumpers here so when I make this the positive rail it will also make that the positive rail and uh, when I make one or the other the negative rail the other one will be the negative rail and so what we're gonna do to get this as I said we have a zero volt reference point we're gonna have about nine volt positive and about nine volt negative so as you can see here we can do that with two nine volt batteries and I have these two batteries here they're actually lithium ion rechargeable batteries it says 9 volts but really you're going to get close to about 8 volts with these but precise voltage doesn't matter this will work with uh, 5 volts and it's got to be a split power supply though but uh, if you use uh, batteries you could have 6 volts on one side 6 on the other or whatever use a battery pack but in any case the voltage doesn't matter but this setup does so we're gonna take the red wire here and plug this into the uh, positive rail and then our ground point as I said before it's where this orange jumper is so that's where the two LEDs are and the uh, input to the these uh, these are stranded wires they're, they're coming a little loose but uh, the ground points where the LEDs and the uh, inverting pin are connected so now you're going to see the green light come on first off we have a little bit of a positive voltage coming from there once we apply both batteries but also we're only providing positive power right now so the output's positive it's kind of hard to avoid that LED coming on because we got to plug in one battery at a time but now we're going to take the red side of this battery and put that to ground right there all of this area here is ground it's all connected because of this jumper 
and then these wires are kind of obnoxious at times but uh, we'll plug that in into there anywhere on the negative rail. So now the uh, LED came on. I haven't tested the circuit yet but uh, so far it looks good and so right now this is a little bit more towards positive. I'm going to turn it towards negative. I won't have to turn it very far but now you see the red LED came on and now back to positive the green LED came on. And one thing you'll notice I'm going to turn it all the way up towards uh, positive as much as I can. You see the LED doesn't really change its brightness. It kind of does right at the border but otherwise it's a pretty solid uh, jump from a green LED to red LED. Red LED when I got a negative voltage here no matter how far I turn the uh, negative voltage and then uh, turn back to positive voltage it's green and it does that no matter how far I go into the positive voltage range. And I didn't realize that black jumper was uh, blocking the view, so I'll zoom in a little bit. But first I want to mention, the reason why I'm using 470 ohm resistors is because they limit the current pretty well for a 9 volt power supply. Especially when it's also going through an LED. And uh, you can use any value higher though. That'll just limit current more and provide more protection. Just the LEDs will be less dim for the most part. So... Here we have the arrow, it looks about halfway, so I'm just going to slightly go the other way. Now the red LED is on. So that little bit of difference, that's all that matters. And if I turn it all the way towards positive, of course the green one comes on. So anywhere along all the way there towards the halfway point, the green will be on. And then the uh, red LED will be on whenever we're anywhere closer towards the negative rail there. So that should give you a better view there. And also I mentioned earlier that this resistor really isn't needed. And we could have put a resistor there. And I'll, I'll prove that right now. So you can see this is up to uh, pin number 2 there. I moved these over so you can see where they were inserted better. And I'm going to pluck this out. And looks like by default we kind of have a positive output. And so... I'm going to take this jumper here, put it to pin number 2, and it's switched because I can generate electricity. So I'm actually generating an alternating current, as you can see. That's why both are on, and uh, that's about all I'm going to say about that. I did uh, earlier videos where I talked about that. You actually generate a little bit of electricity, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's from all the power and uh, light that's surrounding me right now. I can transfer it to the circuit when it's a sensitive amplifier like this. So now we just have the jumper wire there and we're on the positive side. I'll turn it to the negative side and you can see it works exactly the same. This doesn't let current flow through but it'd be easy for me to accidentally plug the uh, wire into a wrong spot. That would bring me directly to the battery. That would be a short circuit. So I like having that resistor there in case I accidentally touch the resistor to the wrong thing. It won't provide a short. It will have to go through the resistor. And I mentioned earlier I could even have a resistor coming out of the output here. It won't matter because the uh, non-inverting pin it's blocking current. Both of the pins are. And so again I'll do the same demonstration there. Make sure you can see the arrow. It's about halfway. A little more towards negative. I turn it a little more towards positive. So you get the same outcome. And I have a bunch of resistance here so I wasn't worried about a, a short circuit anywhere anywhere along the line when it comes to uh, this, this area. So it doesn't hurt either way to have resistors on each side. But it's another component and stuff. If I had the right length jumper I could have uh, used that. But I like using the resistor between the uh, ground and the integrated circuit. Alright so I'm going to wrap this up on these charts. I might do another video or something taking actual voltage measurements but uh, hopefully this demonstration was uh, enough for you. So a lot of times you'll see charts like this to indicate the the voltage changes and the output voltage changes. And so I, I've seen similar ones charts like this but I came up with this one on my own. So I showed that whenever we're in the positive range here then the output was uh, positive. 
as soon as we dip to the negative range then the output dipped to negative. So this was saturated. If you notice the LEDs didn't change their brightness no matter uh, hopefully you know about voltage dividers so I don't have to explain that too much but I was changing the voltage with the voltage divider and it didn't matter what the voltage at the voltage divider was as long as it was positive the output of the 741 op amp was positive and that was saturated though it gave us as close to the power supply positive side of the power supply that it outputs and we could measure to see the exact value but it's pretty close and then once we dip to negative territory no matter how long we stayed there and the changing of it the negative the output was negative I should say and it was fully negative the LED stayed the same brightness no matter how much I changed the voltage at the non-inverting input so even if I wiggled it around like that again the voltage was either positive or negative but it was fully positive or negative as far as that output goes and the voltage of the power supply.